So the first speaker who will do his presentation is Mr. Eiji Ohira. Mr. Eiji Ohira is the Director General of Fuel and Hydrogen Technology Office, Smart Community Energy Systems Department of New Energy and Industrial Technology Development Organization, Naido, Japan. He joined the Naido in 1992, just after he graduated from Tokyo University of Science. Before taking up his current positions in April 2013, he served in several positions, including representative at Nido Asian Representative Office and director of the Energy Storage Technology Division. So please welcome Mr. Eiji Ohira, time and screen are yours. Good morning and selamat pagi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> Uh, first of all, uh, I thank you for the everybody who's joining this conference. I'm very uh, happy to be here uh, to introduce uh, our current activity, our future activity toward uh, zero emission or realizing uh, the carbon <coughs> hydrogen society. Uh, today, uh, I bring some kind of information about the Japan current policy and the NATO's activity on R&D for hydrogen and fuel cells. So let me start our current Japan policy. And uh, we have uh, energy policy, but the latest one is uh, the carbon neutrality. In October last year, the Prime Minister declared that Japan would achieve the carbon neutrality by 2050. Uh, to address this challenging target, the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry Committee formulate green growth strategy achieving the carbon neutrality in collaboration with related ministry and agencies in December 2020. That's a strategy is an industry uh, policy to reach a challenging goal, achieving carbon neutrality and aim toward positive cycle, economic growth and environmental protection. Uh, this figure uh, show uh, just an image how to achieve the carbon neutrality. And the current emission is uh, kind of 1 billion carbon dioxide emission from the energy sector. In uh, 2050, uh, promote uh, conversion to the electricity, there are emission the power sector, the addresses, uh, such as uh, renewable energy, the fossil fuel CCS, uh, that's a percentage, just image, but uh, this uh, policy will be uh, discussed in the near future. And uh, uh, this here shows in uh, 14 a uh, priority field or industry uh, to be promoted on the strategy to toward carbon neutrality. Upholding high goal for the each of 14 priority field, uh, that the strategy formulate action plan covering comprehensive policies and uh, such as budget, tax, regulation reform, standardization, and international cooperation. Uh, hydrogen itself uh, is one of the promising industry and uh, also uh, hydrogen and uh, its application fuel cell uh, appears in uh, other industry like mobility and maritime uh, to uh, aviation etc cetera, etc cetera. i mean you may understand that hydrogen is not only solution uh, for carbon neutrality but a very very important law Um, this is the outline of the current hydrogen policy, namely basic hydrogen strategy, as uh, Yurisa mentioned that. And uh, uh, this strategy is based on our previous uh, target. Previous target is minus 80% degrees by 2050. And under the current uh, to new policy of carbon neutrality 2050, uh, this strategy might be revised in the near future. And um, this strategy is a kind of future vision and an action plan to other things, sorry. Our, our goal is uh, to, to <clears throat> reducing the carbon, uh, sorry, reducing the hydrogen costs to the same of the current conventional energies, maybe $2 per kilogram. We also uh, set the uh, benchmark for 2030 as such as number of fuel cell vehicle, or number of stationary fuel cell, or number of hydrogen filling stations, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, <clears throat> I will talk about uh, our current status of the hydrogen and the fuel cell application. And our, our target is here, and uh, on the current status here, um, our first commercial project, residential fuel cell, we have already 
380,000 units be only installed in Japan households. For the mobility sector, we already have uh, nearly 5,000 fuel cell vehicles, including the uh, 100 uh, fuel cell buses. <clears throat> Hydrogen fuel station, we're leading the world, and we have all, over the 140 hydrogen refueling station in operation. So next, I will talk about the private sector's initiatives. Japan's Hydrogen Association, or J2A, is an organization that works with various stakeholders to ensure that Japan continues to lead the world in the use of the hydrogen. J2A was established in December 2020 with 90 component participation. And its law, its activity is uh, uh, very wide and is pro proposing the, the coordinate a social implementation project and investigate uh, the creation of the fund and the basic management and the operation, make policy proposal for generate demand deregulation, undertake international activities correct analyze and disseminate information with Japan overseas. We Japan government may uh, cooperate with uh, this private sector's initiatives to promote the hydrogen. So next, I want to talk about the uh, nettles around the activity on the hydrogen fuel cells. This slide show is the current direction of our program. Our first step is to promoting fuel cell application. Now we have been conducting the two types of fuel cell. One is PEFC, mainly for the mobility uses, and the other one is the station, uh, solid oxide fuel cell, or mainly for the stationary applications. Um, <clears throat> through the uh, our discussion with the stakeholder like Toyota and Honda, uh, we set a very uh, ambitious uh, target for the future fuel cells. Uh, to achieve this challenging goal, uh, to address this challenging goal, we invite uh, many all of the stakeholders, not only industry, but also the uh, academia or universities. A new, uh, developing a new application is a key to enhance the fuel cell market. We need to develop the fuel cell yeah, maritime applications, uh, heavy on the middle duty vehicles, and the bus and trucks, and sometimes airplane, or train, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so we took the fuel cell. Um, our challenge is how to improve the efficiency. Our target is over the uh, sixty-five percent. <clears throat> this is almost same as you know, a large scale or stationary power plant. The durability is other challenges. Our target is over 130,000 hours. It almost uh, equal to 15 years lifetime. The hydrogen fuel station is a key uh, to disseminate fuel cell vehicles. Okay, uh, our challenge is reducing the capex on the backs of the fuel cell uh, <clears throat> hydrogen fuel station. And also need to, to preparing the heavy duty uh, heavy duty vehicle need to develop the uh, refilling protocol, the hydrogen metering, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Our next challenge is a wider use of the hydrogen or developing the hydrogen demand and the integrated with other energy system. We I would like to say that hydrogen scaling up. And one is one challenge is developing the hydrogen supply chain or large scale hydrogen application. We already developed the uh, hydrogen gas turbine. We need to also continue to develop the uh, hydrogen boiler, the hydrogen engines. It's a work for decarbonization and the industry sector. Okay, power to gas is a key technology for, for decarbonization and the system or uh, sector coupling. So you know, I would like to bring some snapshots from our project, mainly hydrogen scaling up. Uh, this slide shows uh, the, our uh, first hydrogen gas turbine project. It's, uh, uh, 
installed in a city area to provide a sheet power a surrounded area like a hospital and a sports center, any other public uh, facility. Now, this is a uh, gas turbine. It's a uh, classic heavy industry technologies. Okay, so we can operate it. Uh, it's a dual fuel, uh, dual fuel gas turbine system, but we can operate at 100% hydrogen with a stable or NOx emission. Uh, this slide show all uh, the our um, other project is the hydrogen international supply chain. But the issue is how to concentrate hydrogen for the uh, long time, uh, long distance transportation. Uh, one, we, uh, <clears throat> one option is liquefied hydrogen. We already uh, developed the uh, small but well first hydrogen uh, tankers. And also, we also already developed the uh, uh, hydrogen handling equipment uh, at the port, like uh, loading and unloading effect hydrogen, large scale liquid hydrogen storage. Um, this slide shows our current activity on the megawatt scale of the part gas project. Uh, let's try show uh, the our first uh, 10 megawatt uh, alkaline water electrolysis uh, part two gas project. And last slide show all uh, the uh, we also developed the uh, uh, cutting edge technology. Uh, as I say that uh, utilizing high performance, high efficiency hydro or carbon membrane is for for the uh, PEM water electrolysis. Uh, this megawatt scale particle gas system already de developed, and uh, our project demonstration will be started as soon. Okay, uh, let me conclude my presentation. Yes, and uh, uh, Japanese government still uh, strongly uh, promoting the hydrogen. That's a key technology for the carbon neutrality. Uh, we uh, clarify the, <coughs> the future vision and direction. Yes, so we have already developed the market application, but uh, I just started uh, to market penetration. Um, we uh, need uh, the information from the market, and it, it's just the information let me feedback to the uh, next on the activity. So we also need to enhance application in both technologies. Our goal is uh, developing the low carbon energy system. And the key word is uh, scaling up and the integration. Okay, and uh, uh, hydrogen society. Uh, can be uh, developed by the one country. Uh, we need an international uh, collaboration. I hope uh, this opportunity is the first step for the future collaboration between Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, and Japan. Okay. I'd like to, to close my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and Terima kasih banyak.